Hello fellow shellheads, Dan here, and this ugly mass of wires and glue is the inside of my helmet. And today I was going to discuss um, basically the circuit that I have going on here where I got these parts. Uh, unfortunately this won't be a full-fledged tutorial. If you want a full-fledged tutorial, I highly recommend uh, xrobots.co.uk I believe is the name uh, on YouTube. Uh, James, his uh, how he did his Iron Man helmet tutorials uh, are what I followed to come up with this, and this is almost a, an exact replica of that. Uh, there are some slight differences that I had to figure out on my own, but uh, if you want a, t a full fledged tutorial on how to do this, I recommend his videos. He is far better at explaining how to do it than I am. Uh, I assure you. <laughs> but uh, just to show how I did this, um, everything in here, th these two circuits, or circuit boards here, I'm sorry, uh, are from Pickaxe. You can see the name right on them, but uh, you can go to their website and get this stuff. Uh, this is a Pickaxe 08 Proto board. Uh, you have to order the chip separate. And then over here I have... Um, the RF receiver, the radio receiver. And this comes as a kit with its transmitter and then this module, the, the actual uh, RF module uh, receiver unit, this is separate, but it comes as a matched pair as well with the transmitter um, module on it or with it as well. So you have to order those two things uh, separate, but together with this big board and the small module. You have to order those together uh, to get this nice match set and it works great. Um, really simple. Uh, there's no programming involved in this one. Uh, the, the chip comes pre-programmed to run. Uh, you can do more to it uh, with the, the proto board and stuff, but um, you really don't need to if all you want to do is run this as a wireless switch for your helmet. Now, um, the transmitter uh, is nearly identical to this. There's some subtle differences, but I have that in the forearm, and then the button that activates that is hidden inside one of the fingers uh, on that glove, or on that, on that particular hand. And uh, basically, when I push the button on the transmitter, it sends the signal wirelessly, beautifully, to this uh, receiver. And from the receiver, it comes down this green wire that you can kind of sort of see due to the shadow from the jawline here. But if I hold it a little bit differently, you can see, now you can see that. Now that goes to this proto board and acts as the switch to activate the whole setup. Now, with not, without getting too technical, uh, the program that I have inside here, the first thing it does is sends power to this relay, which uh, in the relay's resting position, it cuts power to the servos. Now, I'll have to move a little bit so you can actually see what I'm talking about. These are the servos here. This is actually the widow's peak and top of my forehead and stuff, but this uh, relay right here in its resting position uh, cuts power to these servos so they're not wasting power uh, while I'm, I'm sitting or while it's uh, open. So when, um, when this board gets its signal and the first thing it does is switches this relay which allows power to go to the servos, the proto board then sends a signal to the servos to open or close, uh, whichever the situation may be, and it opens or it closes. And it, it works great. Um, like I said, if you wanna know more about this, check out James's videos. But uh, one thing I wanna mention that I had to figure out on my own, which I should have known, but it didn't dawn on me while I was putting this together. Uh, originally, I had tried to run both the receiver and 
uh, this proto board which controls the servos all on three AAA batteries. That did not work. It turned out terribly. Uh, it died very quickly. So I added this second pack of batteries which only goes to the receiver. Now in order to do that I had to uh, take one of the uh, empty slots on the ground on this um, RF receiver board and run uh, an extension wire to the ground on the proto board or the, the servo control board. So they, they share a ground in order for this switch to work. Without sharing the ground, the, the um, RF uh, receiver here would not act as a proper switch. It wouldn't, it wouldn't set it off. You have to share the ground in order for the high signal to um, activate the, the uh, proto board or the servos. So that was a little lesson that um, I should have known uh, from you know learning how to do this, but um, pro tip, thing to remember, I guess. Um, but that's basically it. Uh, I know that that was uh, glazing over a big job here, um, but like I said, um, this comes as a kit. If you know how to solder, you can put this thing together. There's no programming involved. It, it comes with all of its parts, except for this um, long stick module here. Like I said, those are a, a separate thing that you have to buy in conjunction with these boards. But if you get them from Pickaxe, you can buy them as a uh, matched pack. And uh, all you do is when you get the kit, you just follow the instructions and solder everything into place. And it works from there. You don't really don't need to know any uh, super complicated um, circuitry knowledge or programming to make these things work. They work pretty much out of the box after you put them together. And the um, this proto board, uh, I know it kind of it probably kind of looks complicated if you're not familiar with this stuff, but this. Most of this comes as a kit itself. Uh, the proto board doesn't come with this chip. You have to order this um, separate, and uh, all these cert all these parts that are on this um, the left hand side here, you have to order those separate as well. Um, if you don't already have them, are all these parts. But uh, if you go to the Pickaxe website and you're looking for these particular items. Um, on the pages where you can buy these or where you find these items, uh, down below there's a link to PDF files uh, for instructions on how to do certain things with this. Uh, number one being how to control a servo. And that gives you the instructions on building the servo circuit with the pull down resistors that are connected to the switch. Um, it gives you instructions on, on what size resistors you need and everything. So um, like I said, if you go to James's video, he'll explain all that. And if you go to the website, you'll be able to find um, all the information you need to put these together because um, I didn't know anything about this stuff when I first started uh, making it work or making it and I was able to make it work. So uh, you will learn quite a bit in a short amount of time if you order this stuff and just follow the instructions. Um, you'll learn how to put this stuff together. But that's that's it. Um, I hope you guys uh, found this somewhat informative. I'm sorry this isn't a uh, full-blown tutorial, but uh, I think that that would probably take a very long time. Uh, but I would be happy to uh, make that video if uh, people would be interested in it. But like I said, James has already done it and he's who I learned it from. So uh, best get it from him first. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you found it at least a little bit informative or it's given you some ideas uh, on what to look for. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'd be happy to answer. Um, Thanks for watching again. Later.